This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 63 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, the Equine ER. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Equestrian Collections brings the whole universe of equestrian shopping to your fingertips. Visit them at equestriancollections.com. Welcome to the Stable Scoop, where weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. To bring you the news through hay or hot water, while using their tails as their own fly swatters. So sit on down and laugh till your poop, cause it's time again for Stable School. Stable School. Stable School. This is Glenn the Geek. And this is Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Well, hi, Helena. Hello, Glenn. How are you? Ah, I'm okay. I I think I have the flu. Yeah, you sound like you're sneezy and coffee and hacky. Yeah, yeah. It's not the swine flu, is it? You know, I don't know. I don't know. It could very well be. I'm glad we're not in the same room. I know. I'm I'm not. I'm not. (laughs) At this point, I've worried about so many gosh darn things, I can't I worry about this. <laughs> no, I know. Flu. And you're a good worrier anyway. I'm a so. very good worrier. <laughs> yeah, we, I've got something. I had 102 temperature last night, which is pretty pretty significant when you're a grown-up. Wow, that is pretty good. I'm surprised you're here, actually. Uh, me too. It, it's, but apparently, I guess some of the kids at school have whatever this is is going around, and you know, the fever goes up there, it knocks you on your feet, and then you know, a day or two later, everything is, is fine. So I'm not worried. Good. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny <laughs> that we're talking about flus and things, uh, because our topic today is a new book, and it very become a very popular book very quickly, called Equine ER, Stories from a Year in the Life of an Equine Veterinary Hospital. And, it, you know, this uh, book was written by Leslie Gutman, who actually resides right here in Lexington, uh, mm-hmm. Kentucky. And she's a journalist who spent a year following around a group of equine ER doctors and tells some of the stories of some of the people, some of the equines and some of the humans that she met and, and their stories. And it just, I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet, but it sounds like a fascinating book and a great Christmas gift. I think it's a great idea, too, and um, such a learning experience for her to share, you know, for what she learned and then for her to share that through a book. And she has a blog, too, doesn't she? Yes, yes, she does. And we're going to talk to her about all of that stuff here coming up shortly. But we did have a little bit of an issue here talk about uh, viruses and things. It wasn't really a virus, but um, we had an issue on Sunday I wanted to tell everybody about because one or two of our listeners notified us about it, and we appreciate that. Um, we had the unfortunate circumstance uh, at the Horse Radio Network of having our some of our home pages for some of the websites hacked. Uh, they were hacked by radical uh, extremists, uh, terrorists, basically. And I'm not kidding about that. That sounds like I'm kidding, but I'm not. And there were some rather disturbing images that overwrote our home pages. Um, and we were alerted, I think, very quickly that it happened by a listener, and I caught it, and I went back and uh, got a hold of the our host provider, and they managed to get it taken down right away. Um, and then we we managed to get uh, a backup put up. So we didn't lose the 260 shows now that we've done. Oh, goodness. And actually, this was a very simple attack. It wasn't complicated at all. They just replaced our home pages. They didn't get into our databases. They didn't. And, of course, there's no listener data on our website anyway. Right. It's just a simple website with our files on it. So we don't have memberships or anything like that. So there was nothing compromised. If you came to the site and saw something unfortunate on Sunday, we were as upset about it as you were, and it was very disturbing. So, uh, you know, just uh, accept that uh, we we got it down as soon as we could, and, we, and we've increased the security to the site. And this kind of stuff happens. These hackers are constantly looking for vulnerabilities, and there's constantly new vulnerabilities. So, yeah. you know, there's nothing you can really do about it except protect as best you can. Anybody that came to the site was fine. They just saw some disturbing stuff. Yeah. Uh, there was no viruses or anything like that. 
So, and I would like to thank the support team at Host Monster for being so wonderful to work with. They were absolutely fabulous. I talked to them several times, each one of them. They answered in 30 seconds, and they were just great. You know, huh. we've, we've hosted all of our websites at hostmonster.com since the beginning. They've been absolutely wonderful, and I recommend to anybody, if they need a hosting company for your website, try hostmonster.com. There's my plug because they were so helpful. <laughs> they were so great about it. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to get that in and, and uh, mention that. There we go. There we go. You know, we have uh, this guest coming up, and we're going to get right to it. Our couple of our, our last couple of shows have gone real long, so <laughs> we're going to well, try. We, you know, we just blah, 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 uh, blah, no, blah, we just blah, chat blah. and chat and talk I and know, talk. we have to do so. a better job of uh, checking ourselves there. That's right. Well, today we're going to try and uh, we're going to try and do that a little bit and keep the show to 45 minutes like it's supposed to be. Um, but Leslie Gutman is an independent journalist, a freelance writer, and new author of the book Equine ER, about a year spent following around the crazy group of equine vets here in the Kentucky Bluegrass. And, and uh, the description actually says, think Grey's Anatomy or House, but with horses. <laughs> that does give it a good description, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, Leslie worked at the San Francisco Chronicle when uh, newspapers were thriving and fun, and editors wrote headlines like, Bad Beer Sends Rancher Into Rage. <laughs> <laughs> she grew up, mo- that'd be in Texas. Uh, she grew up mostly in Lexington, and she was a bookworm addicted to the public library. And we're going to learn a little bit more about her. Uh, coming up, let's get her on the line and find out why she wrote this neat book. Well, welcome, Leslie. Um, before we talk about your book, uh, I think it would help to know a little bit about you, your background, and how you got into horses and, and how you got into writing. Sure. I grew up here in Lexington, and I uh, wrote a bit growing up, actually, out at Masterson Station. And uh, then I moved to the Bay Area after college, and I worked at the San Francisco Chronicle for over 15 years. There's quite a difference from Lexington to California, San Francisco. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) but they still have trail rides there. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty different. So you spent 15 years writing for the San Francisco Chronicle? Um, Yeah, it was 15, a little over 15. Wow, that's that's a long long time time for anybody to stay at one place. You must have really enjoyed your work. Yeah. I did, and also just because so many newspapers are failing right now, I feel lucky to have been there when it was kind of this, you know, rowdy, His Girl Friday atmosphere um, that is slowly, you know, dying, basically. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, so you then went, why did you come back to Lexington then? Well, I was here visiting my mom, and I connected with Blood Horse. I had started freelancing in 2005. And the Equine ER was actually Blood Horse's idea, and they were looking for somebody to write it, and they really wanted to do a book that would appeal not only to horse people but to a general audience. Okay. And the draw for me was I've written many different kinds of stories from, you know, politics to at-risk, at-risk kids to the environment, but one of the themes has always been situations where there's something great at stake. And so, you know, a hospital, it's just a setting where there's so much at stake, even a hospital for horses. So, and, and do, do, who, which hospital, do, do you ever say which hospital you did? Yes, it's Rude and Riddle Equine Hospital. Okay, so you did Rude and Riddle. Um, we've had actually, yep, uh, we know. Vet, we, yeah, we've had a vet or two on from uh, Rude and Riddle. So now, okay, so we need did they have any, I, I, I'm just curious if they had any apprehension about you doing this. Well, they didn't at first, but then when I started wandering around with a little pad, writing down everything everyone said, you know, it was a little awkward. But they got used to me after a while because I was there so much. I was just wallpaper. Yeah, and horse people aren't a very trusting lot to begin with, yeah. you know. <laughs> then you get the they hairy eyeball. So Whenever you so... drive up to a new farm, it's like, who are you? What are you doing to my farm? <laughs> I know. I know. I it was it was hard at first, but then winning their trust was you know really fulfilling for me as a journalist. And you actually spent a year. So how how much time did you actually spend with them over that year? I spent almost every day there. Really? There, watch, yeah, watching wow. surgeries or going out with them on farm calls or you know out interviewing um, you know clients who appeared in the book or tracking down stories. So you know I'm. I think some people think I actually worked there because I was there so much. So, <laughs> it was kind of crazy. Did you, did you have a plan um, or, you know, a, an outline of how you were going to, to track this or how to organize? Because so much can happen in a place like this. How did you organize yeah. everything? What were you thinking? Well, I, you know, I 
didn't because I was on such a quick deadline. I had to do the whole thing, including the editing, within a year. And it was funny. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience, but sometimes things just flow, you know? And, you know, I had a couple principles, guiding principles for me for the book. One is, you know, I wanted to use different kinds of horses to appeal to many different kinds of horse owners. So, you know, there's quarter horses and saddlebreds and, as I said earlier, a lot of race horses. Um, and then I wanted to have events that were representative of what went on in the hospital. So there's, you know, dystocias, difficult births. Um, there's, you know, a racing breakdown. There's um, EPM. So, you know, other than that, I just kind of, you know, tried to kind of hang on to their car doors as they drove out of the parking lot. <laughs> right. Now, you, had, you actually interviewed the clients, too, right, somewhat? Yeah, it's very comprehensive. It's from the point standpoint um, view of, you know, clients, um, you know, these big farm owners, and then, of course, the vets themselves. And what I found was uh, the... You know, the setting is kind of like Grey's Anatomy or Scrubs, but with horses. <laughs> so, <very laughs> Got lots of drama. Black- so they're all sleeping yeah. with each other and... Uh... <laughs> well, there yeah, is a chapter I mean, yeah. called Vet... Is that in the book, there's, there's too? A <laughs> book. It is, it is. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a chapter called Vet Love. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, come on, yes. it happens. You're in such an emotionally charged atmosphere. <laughs> oh, now, now I do have to read this book, for sure. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Life in their workplace. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't think yeah, that would end up in the book, though. So. That's a good show. Yep. But yeah, Vet, Vet Love. love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vet um, have a very colorful love life. <laughs> wow. So, All right. Well, that just minute, sold that about a thousand more books. From experience. <laughs> <laughs> she was with them for a year. I was really professional. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, this, you know how she just asked you if uh, things, if you had a plan and things went the way they planned? Well, this was not in yeah. our plan at all. This whole conversation vet about love. vet love. Yeah, it just wasn't in the plan. Yeah, yeah. We never had a plan. Yeah. No, we don't have a plan either. Um, <laughs> so. we, should stick, we should stick to the interview. I mean, we do <laughs> want to learn a little bit about this woman's life for the past okay. year writing this book. Gotcha. So, okay, so um, you're, you're following these vets around and clients and, and <clears throat> the animals. Are you, do you find yourself getting attached or getting involved in a particular story or a case? Yeah, it's really hard not to because people are letting you into their lives, and especially when they're grieving. For example, we have uh, there's a horse in the book, Piaf, who came down to the clinic from Chicago, a 10-hour trailer ride, and he had EPM, and you know, the horse just he just wanted to live, and he was hanging in there, and um, you know, spoiler alert, toward the end, um, they actually used a drug for humans interferon to try and save him. Um, but it didn't, you know, it didn't work, but everyone at the clinic and of course myself, you know, just got so attached to this horse and, you know, wanted him to live. And one of the real interesting things that I learned was that, um, a horse's desire to live is actually just as important as it is with a human patient when it comes to recovering from a serious illness or a trauma, you know, it can make or break the difference, you know, between whether it lives or not. Well, that's interesting too, because you can't really yeah. ask them if they have that desire. You know, you don't. Uh, yeah. It's not something that you, you know, like with a human, you can tell by their talk, speech, and their personality, and all of that. It, it's got to be tougher with an animal. Do they see it? Can well, they? Guess, can their yeah. the care providers tell what they've got to work with? Yeah, especially I guess because they've done this so much. Um, you know, they would just there's this. One vet in the book, I don't know if you guys know him, Dr. Steve Reed, and uh, this was actually the vet on the case of Piaf with EPM, and one of his phrases is, this horse wants to live. And he even has it on a, you know, inscribed on, in a frame in his office. Oh, wow. Well. Oh. Yeah. Oh. They have some great vets over there. It, uh, it's a, it, is a, it is a neat place, and it, it's a fun place. When you did the book, is the book written, is it all just a series of individual stories about the, the patients, or is it more a, 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 an overview of the whole operation and that kind of thing? Well, the way I describe it to people is Animal Planet meets James Harriet. So every <laughs> chapter is about a different case for life at the clinic like Vet Love. And so, I can't believe that's still I, blowing my way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I also really wanted to give people 
um, you know, a, a postcard from the bluegrass in the way when you read James Harriet's books, you kind of feel like you're in the English countryside. And then also because the Eight Bells incident happened, you know, the year I was at the clinic, I used that as the overriding thread throughout the book. And did Eight Bells end up going to the, there? Um, no, they put her down right... Right there. They uh, put her down on the track. Know, on the track. That's right. Yep. But yep. It, yeah, but I was at the clinic when everyone was watching that, and Dr. Bramlage was, you know, the, um, you know, the on-call vet on national television who kind of gave the world the news about Eight Bells. Huh. So I use that a little bit throughout the book, um, you know, with Big Brown and, you know, so on. Did, Did they bring her to to the hospital, to Rude and Riddle afterwards, to do a postmortem? I mean, I'm... You know, they obviously euthanized um, her, but did they did they assess her there? They didn't. No, well, not that I know of. Not that I know of. But one kind of interesting case is the day before the Derby at the Kentucky, um, at the, excuse me, Al Shiva Stakes, Chilo broke down. Um, he's a Michael Matt's trained horse. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And yeah, he was on track for the Breeders' Cup, and he they brought him to Rudin and Riddle. Oh the day before the Derby and his case I followed, you know, over the next six or seven months where they saved him, you know, and he's at studs right now or he's, um, you know, he was last year. I, you know, I live in Lexington also, and my wife works uh, in a way in the thoroughbred industry. And, you know, it's, I don't know how to ask. I'm going to ask a serious question here, I hope, and I don't know how I don't know how to ask it because I don't want you to throw anybody under the bus either. Um yeah. I I just my personal opinion is there's an, a lot of unnecessary voluntary surgeries for for babies through yearlings and and uh mm-hmm. did you come away with that feeling? Gosh, it's so hard to say because I was I couldn't be everywhere at once, uh-huh. you know, because I was covering so many different things. I mean, one of the biggest, you know, issues that I heard about through the year was, you know, um, breeding for horses that look good in the sales ring, yep. you know, instead of for durability. Right, exactly. And, yep. yeah. And, and then the whole straightening done. of the legs and, you know, the, the, you know when they're babies and yeah. all that stuff goes on a, a way too much, I think, but... That's my opinion. Yeah. I, I mean, I know a lot of people feel that way. Um, I think, you know, I really tried to address some of the breeding issues in the last chapter, um, and which talks about Chaloki and eight bells and stuff. But, you know, I know a lot of people out there feel that way. And, um, you know, but another really key issue, I think, is how individual owners and traders treat their horses. Yeah. You know, because you'll have some horses that, you know, are out of the same and, you know, breeding lines, and some also have injuries and some won't, so. Did you think that, um, <clears throat> how did, were you able to put aside your own preconceived notions about certain, um, or let's not, let's not talk about emergency responses, I know that's what your book was about, but since you're following these, th- these cases around, um, were you able to put aside your preconceived notions about certain procedures, elective procedures? And, you know, I didn't know enough about it really to have judgments. I oh, think. good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because even though I grew up here and stuff, you know, I'm not, quote, unquote, or I wasn't a horse person because the clips really wanted someone who could appeal to a general audience. So I kind of didn't know what I was getting into <laughs> a little bit. That's, and once yeah, I yeah. realized, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is very controversial. So I really tried to just be straight and report it like it was, like it is, you know. Well, yeah. Around the breeding, around the breeding controversy, um, I think what was hard for me is, you know, I've been going to Kingland since I was eight years old, and I've never seen a horse break down, and I wasn't actually even aware of the frequency of it, and I became, you know, somewhat conflicted about racing. But as I interviewed many, many people in the industry and horse people, you know. A, I would say the vast majority of them feel conflicted in some way. Hmm. I, w- I would agree with that, wouldn't you, Helena? Yeah. I think we all we all have our. Yeah, but it's nice to yeah. hear it. It's yeah. nice to hear yeah. that it's yeah. you know, we're we're always going to be conflicted about something, but it's it's nice yeah. to hear it from somebody who's sort of on the inside or spent a year on the inside. <laughs> now, you... well, it was kind of a relief to see that you know how conflicted people were because I became conflicted as well. 
Right. So, it's yeah. not like they were they didn't care. No. Mm-mm. People yeah. love the horses. There's no yeah. question. Speaking of being conflicted, um, I'm conflicted about whether I could see all the things you saw without passing out. So <laughs> uh, did, was that a concern before you went into this? Um. Well, sometimes you just kind of got to leave before you look. Oh, you know? uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about it, and I it's so odd because when I'm, you know, go to work, which I consider this going to work, when I have a job to do, which is, you know, to write about something for a reader, I'm so focused on capturing the details. You know, I, you know, I don't think about anything else. When I'm here at home, you know, if I cut my finger cutting a tomato, I'm freaking out. I'm about to pass out. <laughs> but there... I, it just didn't register because I'm so focused on capturing, you know, the details of the surgeries. Although some were extremely bloody, and you know. And we apologize in advance for anybody eating lunch right now. Um, well, come, yeah. <laughs> come back later. Um, yeah. so. I mean, it's kind of exciting, to be honest. You know, it's it's just. You know, and they're in the middle of doing something. They're fixing it. They're working on it. It's not like they're just yeah. bloody. And nothing's happening. There's that kind of helps a little bit. You know, well, that and, there's a... you know it's, yeah, and I just found it really inspiring because my job, you know, nobody lives or dies with my job, and I just found it inspiring how serious of it's on, how high their standards are, and how fast they can work, and you know, it's just really amazing to see you know someone who's got a beating heart in their hands and save it. Oh gosh, yeah, that that's uh, that I, again. <laughs> I'm I'm just one of those squeamish kind of persons anyway so i don't, yeah, know. I don't yeah. know my wife would be right in there with you going can i touch it but uh, <laughs> but uh, now did you actually get to physically do anything or were you always just observing or did they just observing okay yeah yeah right. i mean i think i held like a halter for somebody you know <laughs> so. okay. now did you actually go out on any calls or were you just at, at the er you know i went out on lots and lots of farm calls oh did you good well you got to see the other side yeah. of it then too yeah, it was really fun, and oh God, you just think, you know, now I know why they do this job. You're driving around these beautiful farms, and you know, it's amazing. It's what did amazing. you? What did you? Did you see any trends or patterns from an outsider's perspective? Um, since you went on so many farm calls, did you notice anything? Anything? Just trends. Well, I think. I guess, I'm not sure if this is exactly a trend, but one of the things that just fascinated me was seeing how, you know, medicine is really, it's a science that is is always evolving, and it's through trial and error, and, you know, we think that, you know, oh, you know, we think of a procedure like a heart transplant or something, or I don't know, but... And and the vets at Ridden Riddle, it's almost like a teaching hospital or an academic institution because they're always looking for the cutting edge. For example, one of my cases is about a thoroughbred mare named Snoopy Star who was dying of pleural pneumonia. And one of the vets, Dr. Barney Barr, decided to try using an experimental drug on her. And it breaks up scar tissue. And they're actually, um, the people who created it are doing a study with... um, World Trade Center workers after 9-11 who developed a lot of um, um, uh, lung problems. Yeah, from all the lung air. issues, yeah. Yeah, and so this experimental drug ended up saving um, the mayor's life. Wow. And it was just kind of neat to see, you know, you know, from a macro level how, you know, now a lot of vets are using this drug, and, you know, maybe in 10 years it will become common procedure. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm looking here on Amazon, and the reviews yeah. are, are like all five-star. I mean, um, <laughs> it, it's unbelievable. And this one especially, Les- and you pronounce your last name Gutman, right? Um, yeah, thanks. Yep. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah, Leslie Gutman had me in the first paragraph of the prologue, and I know next to nothing about horses or anything equine for that matter. I couldn't put mm-hmm. the book down, and I was so surprised that a book like this could make me cry. The stories were so moving, and her description of all the real-life characters were so vivid, I felt I was right along on the ride with her. I learned so much from reading this book, but it left me wanting more. So is there more? Is there a sequel to this? Well, Vet Love 2? I'm, sure, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure the vets would be so frank with me the second time around. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially after they read that one chapter. They're all uh, yeah. just running for cover. 
I don't think they realized I was writing down every single thing they said. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I would definitely wouldn't rule it out, you know, especially someone like Dr. Newton, Dr. Chris Newton, whom I call the repro cowboy. You know, he's out there in his van with his Buddha between the two front seats as his talisman for broodmares and hmm. just kind of a wild and woolly character. You know, I would definitely wouldn't rule it out. <laughs> Is this your first book, <laughs> official book? It's my first published book. Ah, yeah, no, okay, there you yeah. go. That's that's every writer's yeah. statement, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have 65 yeah, of them unpublished in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, third time's a charm. Well, I'll tell you what, we need to take a short break here, and we'll come back and uh, wrap things up with you, Leslie, but we need to take a short commercial break, and we'll be right back. Okay, sounds good. Well, we're talking about horse health today with uh, Helena not feeling so well and talking about the equine ER. It's time to start thinking about replacing some of that rain gear that's just plain worn out and looking like crap. So with all the rain that has drenched the United States over the last month, it's been pretty incredible. I know many of you are looking for rain gear for yourself and or your horse. Well, EquestrianCollections.com should be your first stop for all of the bad weather wear for you with dozens of selections of top name brands of jackets and coats at prices that you will love and that you can afford. And they just have some great styles out this year in rainwear. And Equestrian Collections just carries all the name brands you're going to want. And for your horse, you will find the waterproof blankets and sheets. There are just tons of them over there with like over 19 different uh, makers of uh, waterproof blankets and sheets. And, you know, you can make EquestrianCollections.com your first stop for all of your fall and winter needs. You won't be sorry. And if you use this, the coupon code STABLESCOOP at checkout, that's STABLESCOOP, two words, at checkout on, under the coupon code section, you'll get $10 off your next order of $120 or more just for the listeners of the Stable Scoop radio show. So that's EquestrianCollections.com. Well, Leslie, now this book is available on Amazon and, and in bookstores as well? Correct, and it's also available through Blood Horse. It's exclusively equine.com. Okay, great. Yeah, and you know, to learn how to say that right. I didn't realize the Blood Horse connection because, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll let out a little tiny secret here that's uh, going to be out this week anyway, uh, thehorse.com, which is uh, a division of the Blood Horse, um, mm-hmm. the horse.com, uh, starting, I believe it's going to be this week or at the latest next week, we'll be starting to carry all of our shows, including this one. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. So this interview, uh, will be heard about, uh, from, from, from a lot of their listeners as well. So I thought you'd be happy to hear that. Um, yeah, the, the horse was a huge resource for me in terms of, um, you know, researching the different procedures and, um, operations and just some, they do a terrific job. Well, they're they're very good people over there. We are so excited to to yeah. be announcing this here very shortly, and uh, yeah. we're just working out some of the technical details now. So um, yeah. that that's going to be a, a cool thing for us. And now, is this out on Audible Books yet, or will it be? Actually, it's funny you ask me that because just this morning, um, my editor wanted to know if I was interested in doing an audio book. So we're going to be doing one. Good, yeah. because I, I, I'm an yeah. Audible person. I listen to all my books that way. And I yeah, would I love, love for books. this to be out on Audible. That would be wonderful. Hmm. Yeah. And this, I got to say, you know, I, I, and it's not too early anymore. This would make an excellent uh, Christmas gift for anybody. Hint, hint, Glenn. Right. Yeah, I already have it in mind for you, Helena, so don't buy one. <laughs> can, I give you my, can I give you my husband's email address? Tell him I like this Christmas. Don't buy one because I'm already buying you one. Actually, it's really, I, I'm excited about the book because um, it's hard for me to immerse myself in these kinds of things because I, I get attached, even just reading the stories, I get so emotionally oh, attached. Oh, she'll be crying her eyes out. Oh, God, I'm going to be crying. But... <laughs> But having worked in small animal hospitals for for a long time, um, it's it's uh, when the emotions and the cases are connected to a place like Rudin Riddle, um, and the mm-hmm. people there who are so invested in not just doing their jobs but doing their jobs well for their patients, you um, it turns out to be good emotions even when the stories don't end well. Would would you say yeah. that's that's kind of a, an yeah, I, I would too because most owners understand or the ones that I interviewed, you know, which is, you know, the vets are doing everything they can to save their lives, you know, that they understand that. And 
there are, you know, some um, poor outcomes or sad endings, but most of all, you know, I really wanted the book to be a fun read. I just mm. wanted it to be, you know, like breathless, like you just can't wait to see what's going to happen next. And there's so much humor. The vets are so funny. They're like, <laughs> you know, they had such great senses of humor. So um, it's definitely, you know, it's not a book that is, you know, it's not a book. It's not depressing. Yeah. No, it's not depressing. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah. And the reviews say it's a page turner, so I, I can. That's why I'm getting a little excited about it. Hey, you know. And well, um, if I can do a little plug, we're also yep. going to be offering um, a special thing through Blood Horse, where you can get a signed copy um, by you know ordering online. So if people want that for a gift. Through the Blood Horse, what was that website again? Um, let me see if I can say it without stumbling. Exclusively Equine dot com. Exclusively Equine dot com. Because I want oh, yeah, a signed we- copy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do I. Hint, okay. hint, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's great. Well, you know, we really appreciate you being on with us. You are, you also have a blog that's at equineer. That's e q u i n e e r dot blogspot dot com. I think it's equine e r. <clears throat> oh, duh. <laughs> You're right. I know, I did the same thing. I'm like equineer. What's that? And I was trying to think if that was really a word or you just made that up. But that makes sense now. All right. And this is why we're in radio. We're not writing. <laughs> this is why we're in radio, yes. And then you have a Twitter feed at Leslie Gutman. And also you can visit your website at lesliegutman.com, and that's two T's. And what we'll do is we'll put all of those links in our show notes at stablescoop.com for this episode. So we'll link directly over to it. Make sure we put a picture of your book in there. And I just think this was a great idea. It was a lot of work. I'm, I'm sure it was. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, from the reviews are ready, you're just, you're just making people's days here. Yeah. Hey, Horse owners and it's, riders, it's, it's lovers. It's exciting, you know, seeing the feedback. It's very, you know, it's kind of a, it's my first book. It's a weird feeling to do something alone in your room and then, you know, to have a review on Amazon. <laughs> but I'm excited and I appreciate you having me on the show. All right. No problem, Leslie. Thank you very much. Well, that sounds like a great book, Helena, and, and I'm definitely going to... Don't buy any Christmas gifts. I already got it on your list. So All right, good, good, I'll good, get good. you signed one. She's actually going to be signing books at the Versailles Library, which is here in Kentucky near Lexington. Uh, it's, it's spelled Versailles, but uh, nobody can say that in Kentucky, so we say Versailles. <laughs> and uh, she's going to be there Monday night, The uh, I think it's the 2nd, uh, like at 6.30, signing books at the library. So you can check her out there if you're local here in Kentucky. Well, Helena, as we promised to make sure that this show was kept a little short, but we didn't want to miss the giveaway. We, we, we're going to be, you can sign up. Uh, you only have one day left. If you're listening to this on Friday, the 30th, go to our website and sign up to win all of that cool mountain horse and horseware stuff. Can I talk about the giveaway? Yes. Can I t- remind everybody? Because I think this is just the best. Go giveaway. ahead. Yeah, but they all have right. one day, so. They have one day. It is free, and it's easy to win. So you just have to register um, to win one of these three totally cool products. Um, And we have Equestrian Collections to thank for it, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, they donated the products. That's correct. We have the Mountain Horse Ladies Arena Jacket. um, And the jacket that they're giving away is a beautiful pale blue color. That's $145 value. Then they have the Horsewear Newmarket Human Throw Blanket, which is so cozy, perfect for horse shows and football games. Um, And the Mountain Horse Unisex Ultra Socks. They're perfect um, to complement your winter boots. They're warm and comfortable. And so just register today, right? Well, by... Yeah, by tomorrow, by the end of the day on Halloween, and then we'll draw on the first. uh, Okay. Who who wins, yep. Wait a minute, by the end of today... Oh, because today's Friday... (laughs) Oh Today's God. Friday, yes, Melina. Today's Friday. <laughs> yeah, so at, <laughs> By the end of tomorrow, actually, the 31st, the Halloween day, we said we'd run it through Halloween day, and right. then we'll do the drawing on uh, November the 1st. So, so just think of it that way. If Halloween night comes and all the ghouls come out and get you, you're done. That's right. <laughs> you got to get it in before the ghouls come get out. Get it in before the candy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
And well, that's great. And we 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 thank Equestrian Collections once again for donating all of that stuff. And if you missed the the episode a couple of weeks ago where we talked about all the cool fall and winter merchandise from Equestrian Collections, go back and take a listen at stablescoop.com. We also had an email that was a lot of fun this week from a guy. So Yay! can I read this? Because it was actually a guy. Yes, you um, can. I, we didn't even know we had any guy listeners. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Patrick wrote, hi, Glenn and Helena. I am the first time horse owner, OTT standard bread, living what my instructor calls a repressed cowboy dream. I just wanted to tell you how much I love and learn from the show. It's funny, informative, and very entertaining. You are both warm, and you make people feel like we're just friends hanging out at the barn and talking to each other. I have, I have to board my horse and do have a few friends at the barn and love your show. It has the same dynamics as talking to someone you like and respect about horses. Keep up the great work. What wow. a fantastic email. Really? Thank you, Patrick. We appreciate that's exactly if we had to do a mission statement for this show, that is it right there. That's what we try and accomplish every week. We don't always accomplish it, I don't think, but we try hard to accomplish it. That, that, that is every totally week. what we live for with this when it comes to this show. Yes. I mean, just that we're friends hanging around talking to each other. That's that's what we do. And right. it's just that we're doing it for, you know, tens of thousands of people around the world. Uh you know, and they can share in a little bit of our insanity. Yeah. So thank you, Patrick, and thanks for being a guy listener. And 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 how wonderful that you've got an OTT standard bread. Yes, that wow. is correct. And we're actually going to, in a show coming up here very shortly, we're going to have another author on who just came out with her book, who we've had on, who was on in the Twitter episode. And she's she uh, rescues off-the-track uh, horses, thoroughbreds, and I think standard breads. And she wrote a book about what it's like and how to train them and what to do with them and... So we're hoping to get her on here in the next couple of weeks as well. I really want to get my teeth into that one. <laughs> and here we I go. Just, I just, it's just a dream, you know? I know. <laughs> it's just a dream. So next week we'll be back here. Uh, we'll have another episode, another new topic for you. And you can find all of our show notes at stablescoop.com. And you can leave us feedback on the contact link right there at the top of the page at stablescoop.com. And again, we thank Equestrian Collections for sponsoring this show. Well, Helena, we both have to get out of here, so we will be sure to be back next week with the 